In this video, we'll cover everything about slope, the formula, graphs, linear equations, and more. But first, let's grasp the concept before diving into the calculations. Imagine you're walking up a hill. Some hills are gentle, and you barely notice the climb. Others are steep, and you feel your legs working hard. That difference, how gentle or steep something is, is exactly what slope measures in mathematics. To understand slope, let's take a closer look at the hill. We want to climb the hill. The slope of the hill, denoted by the letter M, is a measure of the steepness and direction of this line. It is defined as the ratio of the vertical change, that's how much you move up or down, the rise, to the horizontal change, that is how much you move across, the run, between two points on a line. Next, let's look at the types of slope. There are basically four types of slopes. The positive slope, which looks like this. The negative slope, which looks like this. The undefined slope, which looks like this. And finally, the zero slope, which looks like this. To remember this, I use this technique. Assuming you are moving from left to right, if you climb it is a positive slope. You will notice that we will be climbing. Therefore, this is a positive slope. If you descend, it is a negative slope. For this line, moving from left to right, we will be descending. So it is a negative slope. If your way is blocked because you cannot move forward, it is undefined. For this line, moving from left to right, we meet this wall that prevents us from going forward, so it is undefined. And if you don't really meet any problems and your path is straight, then it is a zero slope. Moving from left to right on this line, there is basically no change, so we have a zero slope. Now that we understand the different types of slope, let's take the next step. It's one thing to look at a line and say, that's a positive slope, or that's a negative slope. But it's another thing to calculate the exact slope of a line. So the real question is, how do we find the slope of a line? The method you use to find the slope depends on the information you're given. So let's begin with the most basic situation, finding the slope when you're given two points. Let's say we are given these two points, 2, 3, and 5, 7, and we want to find the slope of the line that passes through them. To find the slope, m, of the line that passes through these two points, we look at rise, that is how much the y values change, compared to the run, that is how much the x values change. For any point, the first number is the x value, and the second number is the y value. Here, you can label either point as 1 or 2. I'm choosing this point as point 1 and the other as point 2. So for point 1, we have x1 and y1. For point 2, we have x2 and y2. Now let's substitute the values into the slope formula. We have 7, which is y2, minus 3, which is y1, divided by 5, which is x2, minus 2, which is x1. Next, we simplify. 7 minus 3 is 4, over 5 minus 2, and that is 3. So the slope is 4 over 3. Now, to truly lock this in, you need to practice. I've put a link in the pinned comment to a free tool that generates infinite problems just like this. And if you're actually still a little stuck and need to see more video examples first, that same link has those for you too. Go check it out and let's move on to finding slope from a graph. So let's look at an example to see how to find the slope from a graph. What is the slope of the line shown in the graph below? First, just by looking at the graph, we can do a quick check. The slope must be negative because the line goes downward from left to right, just like we learned earlier when we talked about the types of slope. But we want the exact numerical value of the slope, so let's count the rise and the run. When finding the slope, m from a graph, we still use the same idea, the change in y over the change in x. The change in y simply means how many points you are going up or down. If you are going up, then you have a positive change. If you are going down, then you have a negative change. 
The change in x simply means how many points you are going to the right or left. If you are going to the right, then you have a positive change. If you are going to the left, then you have a negative change. Now, our first step is to choose any two points on the line. I'm choosing these two points. Let's call them point A and point B. Note, you can choose any two points on the line, but always make sure to pick points where the X and Y values are easy to read. Now to find the slope. All we are doing is moving from one point of the line to the other on the slope triangle. Starting at point A. First, we move down three units to line up with point B. Notice that moving down is negative, so we have negative three here. Then we move four units to the right to reach point B. Notice again that moving to the right is positive, so we have positive four here. So the slope is negative three over four. So far, we've learned how to find the slope from two points and from a graph. But what if we have an equation? How do we find the slope then? Well, that's exactly what we're going to look at next. One of the most common ways you will see slope in an equation is through what we call the slope-intercept form. It's written as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept, the point where the line crosses the y-axis. At the y-intercept, the x-coordinate is always zero and the y-coordinate is b. Let's look at an example. Find the slope and y-intercept of the equation y equals 3 over 2x minus 1. Here, we can see that this equation is already in the slope-intercept form, so we simply identify the parts. We know that m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So the slope, m, is 3 over 2 and the y-intercept, b, is negative 1. And that's all there is to it. Very straightforward. Sometimes the equation isn't written in slope-intercept form right away. So how do we handle that? Let's look at this example. Find the slope and y-intercept of the equation. 2y equals 4x minus 6. Here, we can see that the equation is not in slope-intercept form. So our first goal is to rewrite the equation so that it matches the slope-intercept form. To do that, we need to get y by itself on one side of the equation. Since y is being multiplied by 2, we undo that by dividing every term by 2. Next, we simplify. The 2 cancels out, leaving us with y. 4x divided by 2 is 2x, and negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So the equation becomes y equals 2x minus 3. Now the equation matches the slope-intercept form, so we can easily identify the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope, m, is 2, and the y-intercept, b, is negative 3. Since we now know how to identify the slope and y-intercept from an equation, let's look at how to graph a line using this form. Let's use a practical example. Graph the equation, y equals 3 over 2x minus 1. This equation is already in slope-intercept form. So, the slope, m, is 3 over 2, and the y-intercept, b, is negative 1. Now, let's bring in our graph. Since the y-intercept is negative 1, we start by plotting the point 0, negative 1, on the y-axis. Next, we need another point to draw the line. We can use the slope to find it. Here, the slope is 3 over 2. We know that the numerator shows us how many points we should move up or down, and the denominator shows us how many points we should move left or right. Since they are both positive, we are moving 3 units up from the y-intercept, and then we will move 2 units to the right. This will give us our second point, 2, 2. Finally, we connect the two points, 0, negative 1, and 2, 2 with a straight line. And that's our graph. What if you're given a point on the line and the slope, 
and you still need to write or graph the equation. In situations like that, we use another important form of a linear equation called the point-slope form. The point-slope form is written as y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Here, m is the slope as usual, and x1, y1 represent the coordinates of a known point on the line. The point-slope form is really just like the slope formula we have been using. We have just moved the change in x values dividing to make it multiply. This form is especially helpful when you already know the slope and at least one point on the line. Let's look at an example. We want to write the point-slope formula for a line passing through the point 1, 4, and having a slope of negative 2. Let's name our point x1, y1. Since m equals negative 2 and x1, y1, is 1, 4, we substitute the values into the formula. We have y minus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. And that's it. We just substituted the values into the formula. Now that we know how to write the equation in point-slope form, the next step is learning how to graph it. Graph the line that has a slope of negative 2 and passes through the point 1, 4. Let's bring in our graph. We've been given one point, 1, 4, so we'll start by plotting that point on the graph. Next, we'll use the slope to find the second point. Here, the slope is negative 2, which can be written as negative 2 over 1. We know that the numerator tells us how many units to move up or down, and the denominator tells us how many units to move left or right. Since this is negative, we are moving two units down from the point, 1, 4. Then, because the denominator is positive, we move one unit to the right. This brings us to the point, 2, 2. Finally, we connect the two points, 1, 4, and 2, 2, with a straight line. And that's the graph of the line. Now that we've learned how to find slope in different ways, and how to graph lines, there's one more important idea we should look at, how slope helps us understand the relationship between two lines. Sometimes we want to know whether two lines are parallel or perpendicular, and slope lets us figure that out almost instantly. Let's start with parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that never meet and move in the same direction. And in algebra, they have a simple rule, Two non-vertical lines are parallel if they have the same slope. For example, let's look at the line y equals 2x plus 5 and the line y equals 2x minus 3. These two lines are written in the slope-intercept form. We know that in this form, what is with the x is the slope. We notice that both lines have a slope of 2. So we can say that these two lines are parallel. Next, let's look at the slope of perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are lines that cross at a right angle, that's 90 degrees. In algebra, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Let's say you have a line with a slope, 3 over 2. First, flip the fraction. So the slope is 3 over 2, flipping it gives 2 over 3. Then, change the sign. So 2 over 3 becomes negative 2 over 3. That new slope, negative 2 over 3, is the slope of the perpendicular line. Another way to check if lines are perpendicular is by using the product test. The product test states that two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. For example, let's look at these two lines. Again, we will notice that they are in the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. We can see that the first line has a slope of 2 over 3, and the second line has a slope of negative 3 over 2. To verify that they are perpendicular, we will multiply them to get negative 6 over 6, which is simply negative 1. Since the product of their slopes is negative 1, that proves the lines are perpendicular. And here's one special case you should know. A horizontal line, slope equals zero, is always perpendicular to a vertical line, which has an undefined slope.
great job on slope, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. To master the rest, get my ultimate algebra course. It's the complete roadmap. Every topic, in the right order, with tons of examples and practice to ensure you pass. Click the link on the screen to join the course.